This is the GIS Eden Report for Thursday, July 18, 2024. I am Sherian Noel. In the headlines, Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell to meet with business owners in Karakou on Friday. We'll have the details to this and other stories after the break. Welcome to the 47th meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of Karakum, hosted by your new chairman, the Honorable Deacon Mitchell, July 28th to 30th, St. George, Grenada. The Conference of Heads of Government, comprising the leaders of member states, serves as the highest governing body of the Caribbean community. CARICOM is a multilingual community made up of 20 countries, 15 member states and 5 associate members, and is home to approximately 16 million citizens. CARICOM stands on four pillars, economic integration, foreign policy coordination, human and social development, and security. It holds ultimate authority for negotiating treaties on behalf of the community and establishing relationships between the community and international organizations and states. The conference oversees the financial arrangements necessary to cover the community's expenses, though it has assigned this responsibility to the community council. Typically, decisions within the conference are reached through unanimous agreement. Join us as we begin the countdown for the 47th regular meeting of CARICOM Heads of Government in Spice Island, Grenada, with incoming chairman, the Honorable Deacon Mitchell, and the whole of CARICOM represented. Let's join the conversations and prepare the shifting perspectives on pertinent and pressing issues that affect our Caribbean community. Welcome back. Prime Minister Honorable Deacon Mitchell will lead a delegation to Karakou on Friday as part of government's ongoing initiatives to find workable solutions for the restoration of Karakou and Piti Martinique. A meeting with business owners at the Mermaid Hotel will be the focus of Friday's trip, where face-to-face -face discussions will be held on the way forward. On Friday, we will seek to meet with the business community in Karakou and Piti Martinique um, to get their views on what should be some of the uh, fiscal uh, incentives or recommendations or policies the government should pursue in terms of assisting uh, with the rebuilding and business reactivation in Karakou and Piti Martinique. Uh, similarly, on mainland Grenada, we will seek to engage with the business community, particularly the construction industry, uh, because they will be crucial in assisting us to uh, ensuring that we take the appropriate measures to incentivize the rebuilding and the continued building of uh, homes and businesses and other properties in Grenada at a much higher standard uh, to ensure that we do not have the level of damage and destruction that we've had as a result of hurricane barrel. So uh, we will be planning those engagements. We will be inviting members of the public and members of various sectors, uh, farming, fishing, etc., to come out uh, and share your views, make your recommendations so that we could get discussions and have uh, consensus and national buy-in. <music> happy with the fact that you're here yeah. to, ex to feel and to see yes, that you, know, yeah. you get a different sense yeah. of what's happening and I, I, I saw I saw the I saw the look of, of this me when you when we visit the two schools yeah, yeah. you have a uh, now that you have a real sense of what yes, is yeah, yes. I know that when yeah. we send you the the, 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 the report yes. you would be making a strong plea to your government yes. to assist the people of Karakon and Piti Matney. Yeah, so we appre I appreciate the visit. That was Minister for Karakou and Piti Martinique Affairs and Local Government, Honorable Tevin Andrews. 
On Wednesday, July 17, Chinese Ambassador His Excellency Wei Hongsheng visited the island of Pitti Martinique for the first time post Hurricane Barrel, where he donated relief essentials toward the island. These include five laptops, five tablets, footballs, and EC $5,000. This is in addition to the substantial contribution made by the Chinese Embassy in the immediate aftermath of Hurricane Barrel. Ambassador Wei has taken on a tour of the island so that he could have an appreciation of the damage to homes, businesses and property, as well as measures being employed by the government to ensure the comfort of residents. He was accompanied by Minister for Karakou and Pretty Martinique Affairs, Honorable Tevin Andrews, along with members of staff. Ambassador Wei was also brought to the Dumfries Low Income Housing Scheme, which was constructed by the Chinese government. The housing scheme, which suffered minimal damage, is now housing hurricane relief volunteers from Grenada and the Caribbean region. The Grenada Investment Development Corporation says the reconstruction of Building 10 at the Frequent Industrial Park will create an additional 15 units that can see the generation of as much as 300 jobs. Six years after the destruction by fire of Building 10 at the Frequente Industrial Park, the Grenada Investment Development Corporation has broken ground for its reconstruction. Ronald Theodore, Chief Executive Officer of the GIDC, says the corporation's mandate is to stimulate, facilitate, and encourage and create the enabling environment for developing the local economy and industry. He says as such, it is imperative that the corporation provides affordable infrastructure for enterprise development. Today we take a step to rebuild, to build bigger and better. We take a step to meet the demands of entrepreneurs for affordable commercial space. We take a step to increase our real estate portfolio. We take a step to embark on this exciting project. The corporation's incremental yet steady steps towards this rebuilding project are, are the result of the resentless efforts and support from key individuals and entities. The former chairperson of GIDC, Ms. Leslie Ancion, current chairman, Mr. Ronnie George, and board of directors, past and present. The board and staff of the CARICOM Development Fund, responsible for approving the loan financing to GIDC. The government of Grenada for giving us the approval to receive loan financing from CDF, and for the grant of a 100% waiver of CT and VAT on building materials and equipment for the reconstruction of the building. Chair of the GIDC's Board of Directors, Rodney George, says the groundbreaking signals an intent to move forward, and what they are witnessing is also the creation of a foundation to foster entrepreneurial development. So the new building will comprise of a two-story commercial structure with each floor about 20,000 square feet. And it will be able to house five tenants, up, sorry, up to five tenants on the ground floor and up to 10 tenants on the first floor. floor. And it is projected that the new building will create employment for about 300 persons, which will increase the total employment in this uh, frequent facility to 1,000. And overall, in all the parks that GIDC manage, um, it would bring it up to about 1,500. So no doubt, when completed, Building 10 will be another crucible in which to transform our mission into real world success stories. Finance Minister Honorable Dennis Cornwell reminded those present that disasters come in many forms. He says, be that as it may, the GIDC continues to play a pivotal role in the development of the Grenadian economy and the GIDC. The building 10 that we are now trying to reconstruct was destroyed by fire. And again, thankfully, the GIDC was able to at least have in place an insurance policy that covered the building and its operations here. So apart from the loan financing that we have here, the insurance payout was able to this help in putting back in place this building. I say that to say that we have to always be prepared, whether it be ensuring our buildings, making sure we have some architectural design, some contractor and consultants to make sure what we are doing can withstand the times so that at the end of the day we have a sustainable building that can provide for the company. 
Program Specialist, Caribbean Development Fund, Christopher McNair, says the occasion marks a significant moment as the GIDC serves as a key driver of economic growth in Grenada. He says the CDF is pleased to be able to provide initial financing for the project. This ceremony symbolizes the importance of GIDC to the Grenadian economy, adding an additional 40,000 square foot of, of, of office space to what I believe is an existing 270,000 square feet of space already, employing up, upwards of 1,700 people with over 56 firms. Of course, we're going to be adding more once we have completed this building. The, the main objective of the building, of course, the, building of, of, um, the rebuilding of Building 10 is to support uh, the private sector, to support investors, both domestic and foreign investors um, with suitable and affordable office space and in so doing create new jobs and provide a facility that is suitable for multiple industries as well as of course enhance GIDC's own sustainability which is very very important. Creative Designs and Building Construction Company Limited are the contractors for the project Founder Dr. Anselm Latouche says that Creative Designs and the GIDC has always been partners in the quest to spur investment opportunities. We are committed to constructing buildings that are not only beautiful, functional, but also enduring and, and robust. Building 10 will be a testament of these values, serving the community for many years to come. Thank you for your trust and support as we embark on this exciting journey together. I look forward to the successful conclusion of this project. Once the construction is completed, it is projected that the units will create employment for an additional 300 people, which will bring the number of employees at the Frequent A compound to 1,000. Sherry and Noel for the GIS Evening Report. This is the GIS Evening Report. We will return after the break. Climate change is real, bringing hotter days and less rain. Less rain means less water, so it's crucial for us to conserve water at home. When washing my vehicle, I use a bucket with rainwater that I have stored. This is how I save water. What are you waiting for? Welcome back. Vina Bullin and Sons has been one of the main supermarkets in Hillsborough for years, but within mere minutes of the passage of Hurricane Beryl on July 1st, it was no more. Supervisor Labron John says while he and other members of staff are still trying to cope with the magnitude of what has transpired in Caracou and Piti Martinique post Beryl, however, they are grateful for life. This is the workplace here, um, the supermarket, that's the condition of it. Everything been destroyed as, as you can see. and. Um, I must say that we have to give God thanks for the people overseas who um, different agencies, um, uh, companies, um, organizations helping us with things like food and water and so on. And every day I believe in spite of the, this devastation, yet we are eating and drinking. But it is something that would live on forever based on what's going on right now. Mr. John says the cleanup process will understandably take some time as there is so much to be done on an individual and national scale. First of all, I want to thank all those, especially from the mainland and other countries um, who volunteered to come and assist us in the cleaning up. We, we see they're doing a good job on the roadside. The roads are clear now, vehicles can pass and so on, and you have access you know, to different parts of Karaku, which is a wonderful thing. Um, for myself, I cannot really volunteer at this time because I have so much cleaning up to do for myself around my place. My house went down to one. We have to do a lot of cleaning up. But we must say that we appreciate all those who volunteer and come into the island and giving us this assistance because it's wonderful when the place can clear up. It will take a long time, but we appreciate all the effort and every strength, every fiber in the body, what they're doing for us. Really appreciate that. A thorough assessment of the damage and loss of products will be conducted in due course, and as such, he does not have an idea when the supermarket will open its doors. I don't see it coming back anytime soon because it seems like what you've seen here, we got to rebuild. 
you see, and it takes a long time. Even though sometimes places are insured, you know, insurance don't just do it automatically. And um, it will take quite a while. So I'm, I'm seeing that, you know, right now we just have to rally around and see all that we can do in the cleaning up. And um, the, bigger, the bigger heads will take it from there. Yes? So right now we just have to cope with the situation, see all that we can do, give a, le a helping hand somewhere, and to just bring back things to a place where it's looking clean so a decision could be made, you know, what we do from here. The staff, he says, all of whom have lost all their belongings are coping as best they can and need all the encouragement that they can to get to handle the challenges they are now faced with. My staff coping, based on those that I get in contact with, most of them, I'm in contact with them, uh, they're in contact with me, and uh, they're coping because they said they're getting food, uh, they're getting water and so on, but m all of them lost their, their property. Um, but this is a time in which you have to encourage people. You have to ha help them, you know, in some, some way not to lose courage because it could be very encouraging based on what has transpired, but you have to encourage them and say, well, listen, God is alive, he is good, he would see us through, you know, and just keep trusting in him and do all we can, you know, to help in the situation. Some residents of St. Andrew have formed themselves into a group to assist residents of Karaku and Piti Martinique in the aftermath of Hurricane Beryl. One resident, Mike Noel, spoke with the GIS on the formation of the Quick Relief Group. Mike says the group came together in very short order as the situation on the sister islands is considered urgent. We had placed some blue drums throughout the length and breadth of St. Andrews from Grenville. Um, most of those guys that came up here and they start their home, like, we come up together as a group, we have um, GMC, Not Nice. We form ourselves a little group. The quick, quick release group was about, let's say about five of us, including the people of, who donate, all those amazing people who sponsor. We got food, we got, um, we took two big tank full of water and we went out to the different, as much as people could give, give water to bathe, to the, to the um, facilities. We got some donors like medication. We have given to certain institutions, certain homes, what have little children, we brought medications and supplies. And it was amazing to see the among the people, especially the Indian family. They gave a large contribution of things so we could go out like sanity things for the young children, the young ladies. We distribute that and get it out for a couple of days and then we decide now we're coming back with the original team to help to clean up the streets of Carico. Noel says the Quick Relief Group is operating purely out of love as they have analyzed the level of trauma that the residents have gone through and are still going through. We came here and give, left our homes and come to join with the people of Karaku in an uncomfortable situation to bring only one thing, love. Now, I wouldn't complain. The reason why I wouldn't complain, the eyes could only tell and, and the heart and the mind could analyze what went on here. The people of Karaku, most of them are still in shock. It is very hard to, to, to immediately jump out of a situation like that. You know, some people have lost everything. Not to say they have something to hold on to. They have lost everything. They have no place to sleep. They are, so it's something that we understand, especially the team with Mr. Flaming and the group of us here. When we came here, we had some little considerations of the people lay back. But then, as I said to them, we all come up together and say, listen to me, the people are still in shock. We don't expect them to just jump out of it. What happened here is, is God's love that at least still make us be able and the people are here that we could see them and try to do our best with them. So we're not complaining that they are not vigilant or they're not coming out. We understand. The Quick Relief Group, he says, will give back to the restoration process as long as they are able to do so. We take our final break. More news when we return. Welcome to the 47th meeting of the Conference of Heads of Government of CARICOM, hosted by your new chairman, the Honorable Deacon Mitchell, July 28th to 30th, St. George, Grenada. The Conference of Heads of Government, comprising the leaders of member states, serves as the highest governing body of the Caribbean community. CARICOM is a multilingual community made up of 20 countries, 15 member states and five associate members, and is home to approximately 16 million citizens. CARICOM stands on four pillars, economic integration, foreign policy coordination, human and social development, and security. 
It holds ultimate authority for negotiating treaties on behalf of the community and establishing relationships between the community and international organizations and states. The conference oversees the financial arrangements necessary to cover the community's expenses, though it has assigned this responsibility to the community council. Typically, decisions within the conference are reached through unanimous agreement. Join us as we begin the countdown for the 47th regular meeting of CARICOM Heads of Government in Spice Island, Grenada, with incoming chairman, the Honorable Deacon Mitchell, and the whole of CARICOM represented. Let's join the conversations and prepare the shifting perspectives on pertinent and pressing issues that affect our Caribbean community. Welcome back. A contingent of community leaders and volunteers from Brooklyn, New York, has brought relief supplies that will aid the people of Caracou and Pity Martinique. JS met with the group as they exited the Osprey Lines at the Tyrrell Bay Port Caracou and spoke with one of the members, Trinidadian-born New York State Assembly Representative Jamie Williams, who leads the contingent. Williams said Grenada holds a special place in her heart and elaborated on the significance of their mission to Caracou. First of all, I am from Trinidad and Grenada is another home to me. So when this devastation hit, it was incumbent for us to get together and we were speaking with other electeds. Um, there is assembly member Monique Chandler Waterman here accompanying me with various different groups. We have the Lions group, we have Canar Visit Canarsie, we have the Newton Foundation and so many more that's here. The Grenadian Cultural Group as well. We have Jennifer who actually worked for the government as well. But we're here to bring some relief to the people that have been impacted. And the whole mission is if everybody do their part, you know, we will reach. It's not about the numbers, it's about the impact. So instead of just sending things, you know what, we wanted to come here on the island itself to see the devastation firsthand and to meet with the people that is impacted, to be able to speak to them and to give them what we, we have here, a lot of relief supplies, a lot of care packets and so forth. And when we head back to New York, we also have a lot of supplies for the hospital with medical supplies as well. The relief items included food and sanitary items and toiletries. The Ministry of Education brought educators representing six school districts in the country to introduce them to a pilot program that focuses on the use of software in teaching literacy and numeracy in primary schools. The teachers met on July 15th and 16th at the Anglican High School where they interfaced with three different software, Nepod, Wordwall and Abyssia, which will later be implemented in the rest of the schools on the island. Karakou and Petit Martinique, which is District 1, was not represented due to the state of the Sister Isles after the passage of Hurricane Beryl. We get the details in this Sorana Mitchell report. In total, 24 educators, including IT teachers and principals, spent two days interfacing with software Nearpod, Wordwall and Abyssia, which will be used to enhance student learning in the classroom. Um, well, we were introduced to uh, a software program that this morning, that's um, Nearpod, and it's a highly interactive program that students can be um, engaged in so as to improve their learning outcome in the classroom. The teachers would have the opportunities to add activities, create activities, meaningful learning activities, so as to enhance students' learning. The pilot program introduced by the Ministry of Education is addressing numeracy and literacy, which continue to be problematic areas for students. Giselle Walcott, who was one of the facilitators and is also District IT Officer for District 3, talks about how the different software can be used. Okay, so with NEPOD, NEPOD actually um, allows for interactivity. It gives the students the ability to um, interact live. So, for example, a teacher can have live lessons with the students, as well as for those students who may need the individual attention, it allows um, the students to do that on an individual basis. Um, with the ABC, ABC 
basically there are content that is already there for the students so what the teachers need to do they would access the content and link it with the objectives they would have to ensure that whatever they're exposing the students to it's relevant to the objectives they're trying to achieve um, we also have the word wall which is to an extent similar to Nepod um, there are templates there that the teachers can use and um, create the lessons for the students as well as there is a there are resources there within the community that they can access and uh, use. Those are resources that are already created by other educators that they can use with the students. Ronald Granger is a teacher at St. Joseph's Catholic School. Granger is very optimistic about students using the interactive software. Just the mere fact of using um, computers, they'll be very interested, they'll be excited. And then the Nearpod also give it an extra boost to so we'll be able to learn, they can play games, they can hear themselves speaking, they, they can hear the teachers speaking. So the audio, auditory learners could be boosted, the visual learners could be boosted, and a multiple number of ways can use to enhance the teaching and learning profession. Six school districts were represented at the two-day workshop held at the Anglican High School on July 15 and 16. Due to the situation in Caracu and Piti Martinique in the aftermath of Hurricane Beryl, that district was not represented. Serana Mitchell reporting. Thank you, Serana. And with that, we come to the end of the GIS Evening Report for Thursday, July 18, 2024. On behalf of the entire news and production team, I am Sharia Noel, thanking you for viewing.